Okay, folks, how are you doing? Uh, welcome back to Teach Me. Uh, I just want to say before we go on to this week's Teach Me, thank you to all the people who have given ideas and supported me personally with the ideas for remote learning over the, the last couple of months. Um, I found it really challenging to be in front of a screen and giving lessons, but to get the, the ideas, the video tutorials, the tips, the strategies, and the support at the end of a phone um, or a text or a team meeting has been really, really appreciated by me. So a huge thank you for all the ideas. Um, I've got a, a couple of ideas to share in this week's Teach Me. I'm looking forward to many more staff contributing to it over the coming weeks. So uh, this is a, an idea, it's called an advance organizer. And it's very much about focusing on our recovery curriculum, looking at our students as they come back with their range of needs um, from their various degrees of engagement during the remote working period. And a common um, phrase I've heard in, in classrooms at the minute is students are feeling a little bit of overload and information overload is a very common phrase. So it can be overwhelming. It's overwhelming for us coming back sometimes, but when you've got those young people with their developing minds, um, it can be really uh, anxious time to take on board uh, new information, revisit old learning and make the links between it, between it. So it is a challenging time. So hopefully this idea will help Advanced organisers are, I think, like a good movie trailer. It gives you that kind of sense of what the film is about. It gives you a little bit of the background to the film. It kind of gives you the key moments coming up and it makes you think that, hmm, I'd love to get back into the cinema one time. So uh, an advanced, organis uh, advanced organiser is very much about a preview of what's uh, what's to come and gets them interested in, in seeing a lot more and it links it back to what they already know um, from your previous learning. So it's a tool, um, use it to introduce lesson topics and show relationships about what the students have previously learned and what they're going to go on and learn and I think it's really useful to link the new to the old information. Three basic purposes of it, uh, to direct students' attention to what is important in the up and coming lesson, uh, highlight the relationship that will be shared in that, in that lesson about the big picture, always share the big picture, how does it link in to other uh, topics that you've learned, and remind students about what's relevant, what they've already learned. OK, it's, it's not just a summary or a review of a previous lesson. OK, uh, and it doesn't also just provide you with a structure for the current lesson. It is really important to emphasize it's linking the old, which they've done or haven't done, but it's linking the old material, which they'd covered maybe two months ago, maybe a year ago, maybe three years ago, but it's linking the old material to how relevant that is to the new material. That's the key thing about the advanced organizer. Now there's many different types. Uh, expo expository is just where you share the purpose of the lesson. So here's an example. We've talked about habitats, what habitats are and why some animals prefer to live in different places than other animals do. So you've actually shared with them what you've previously done. But our goal today is to learn about the four layers of a tropical rainforest and which animals live in each of those layers. So it's about sharing what you've, they've previously done, but then introducing what they're coming on to do. Now, when you share that previous, uh, that previous information, always try not use technical language. If technical language is put into that part, it can cause students to switch off. Build the technical language in later on into your lesson. This is, a, this is a nice one. It just involves storytelling at the start. I'm going to tell you a little story about a tree frog who climbed from the forest up to the tallest tree. Well, they didn't make it because natural selection said, no, it, you're not really adapted to living in that place. So it would be where you introduce your story, uh, introduce your new topic linked to previous material, but you're telling it like a narrative. You're making it kind of real to them um, in that. Analogies are really powerful um, and sharing uh, what you've previously done and the link into what's coming up as an analogy is really, really 
uh, powerful there. And there's a bit of research done in science about how they showed um, some students a ball being thrown against the wall and the ball bouncing off the wall. And then the students learned about radar. And they then did the, a, a similar study with a similar group of students where they didn't use that analogy of the ball and the wall. And they found that the students that had the analogy first, uh, their learning was much more effective. So think about maybe analogies and metaphors that you could use in your introductions to your lesson. KWL tables have been around for a long time. Uh, K, what I already know. So it really gives an opportunity for the students to showcase what they know about the topic prior to them starting and then posing some questions, what I want to know about this topic. And then at the end, you've got the L, which is what I've learned. So really kind of linear approach where you've got, uh, you're valuing the students prior learning by giving them the opportunity to share that with the K um, column. This is something that I think is really powerful um, and it's stairway to success. And again, all you're doing is posing a set of questions. Here's one on osmosis. Um, to master osmosis, I need to, to students to explain osmosis using technical, technically correct language. However, in order for them to do that, I need to recap and make sure that they're aware of prior learning that they maybe did in year seven, year nine and year 10. So what I've done there is at the bottom of the stairway, I've put a very kind of fundamental basic question and the complexity of the question has increased. So it gives different starting points for the students. And then my final one, which is so easy to do, um, it's just to timeline your lesson. Draw a line on the board, a horizontal line on the board with your students and then just section it up. OK, section it up into different parts of the lesson, what you're doing, uh, how you're going to be doing it. Um, and it's a really simple way of showcasing to the kids what's coming up in a lesson. So they've got the security and a sense of purpose about what's coming up, not just about what's coming up in terms of what they're learning, but how the learning is taking place. Are they going to be working in groups? Are they going to be working in pairs? Are they going to be working on their own? Are they going to have to listen to the teacher for five minutes? But then there's a quiz afterwards. So it showcases what's coming up in the lesson and I think it's really powerful to share that with our students at these times. And then my last part of today's Teach Me really is how can we improve the quality of our verbal feedback? Verbal feedback is so important now more than ever and I just really want to revisit, I hope you don't feel like you're sucking an egg, but it's just really important to kind of revisit how can we make it impactful with our students so the first thing is let students know that you're giving them important feedback. Henry, I'm going to give you some really important feedback. You're looking at me. Brilliant. Thank you, Henry. Use that kind of language with them. Use the structure, positive improvement, and then can do. So I'll start with the positive. Henry, that was a great essay you produced. Um, to make it better, I need you to use some more of those quotations in there, okay? You can do it. I'll come back in about 20 minutes and I'll see if you've used one of those quotations from the board. So it's, it's using this positive improvement can-do structure and it really is impactful with the students. Ask the students to bounce the feedback back. So you've given this lovely verbal feedback using the positive improvement can-do approach then get the student to bounce the feedback back to you. So get them to repeat it back to you, what it means to them, or you could even get them to write down the feedback in their exercise book. Give them time to uh, do the feedback and then come back to the student and then bounce it back again. How has the feedback been helpful to you? And then this is a, an optional thing, but you could then demonstrate to the class how that student has responded to the feedback. So you're modeling the process of how the student reacted to that feedback, which is really, really powerful. So hopefully a few ideas there. Uh, advance organizer, advanced organizer sharing what you've done prior as a set of low threat questions, non-technical language, um, linking it from the, the previous learned material to the current material, sharing the big picture, and some ideas about how, having, how in, having to improve verbal feedback. Have a great day, folks. I hope it's been useful, and I'll see you next week for another Teach, week, teach Me.
Take care now. Bye-bye.